Good afternoon to everyone from the US Department of State's Africa Regional Media Hub. I would like to welcome our participants from across the continent and thank all of you for taking part in this discussion. Today, we are very pleased to be joined by the US Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, Mike Hammer. Special Envoy Hammer will discuss his recent travel to the region in support of the African Union's efforts to launch talks aimed at ending the conflict in Northern Ethiopia. He joins us from New York City. We will begin today's call with opening remarks from Special Envoy Hammer. Then we will turn to your questions. We will try to get to as many of them as we can during the time that we have. At any point during the briefing, if you would like to ask a question live, please indicate that by clicking the raise hand button and typing your name, media outlet, and location into the questions and answers tab. Alternatively, you can type your full question directly into the Q&A tab for me to read to our speaker. Again, please include your name, media outlet, and location when you do so. For those listening in Arabic, you may type your question in Arabic in the Q&A. If you would like to join the conversation on Twitter, please use the hashtag AFHubPress and follow us on Twitter at Africa Media Hub. As a reminder, today's briefing is on the record. And with that, I will turn it over to Special Envoy Hammer. I think you're muted. Thank you. Hopefully now you can hear me, a uh, little technical glitch. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tiffany, for arranging this uh, Media Hub call. And thank you all uh, for participating, whether here in the United States or out on the continent or wherever you may be. I hope uh, over the course of my tenure, I get a chance to meet uh, some of you, if not all of you, uh, in person. Uh, the job you do as, as journalists is uh, critical and important, uh, not only to the continent, but to democracy in general. And I very much appreciate uh, your interest. Uh, as Tiffany mentioned, I'll be talking about uh, my recent trip, but I wanted to just begin, since this is my first opportunity to engage uh, with all of you, uh, to note that uh, you know U.S. policy towards the, the continent and the African Union was set out very clearly by President Biden in his video uh, to the AU summit in, in February of 2021, where he very clearly stated that the United States wants to partner and be of support uh, to the African Union, to our African partners as African solutions are sought to address African problems. You probably have read with great interest the recent National Security Strategy for Africa that was released in August. And so my work uh, as Special Envoy is to reinforce that in the activities that the United States is involved in, uh, in the Horn of Africa. Uh, as you may know, uh, this uh, recent trip is my third trip uh, to the region uh, since I began uh, as Special Envoy. I was able to go uh, in June to Ethiopia, and then I uh, traveled uh, to uh, the well Egypt, uh, Ethiopia, and the UAE, and also had some uh, Sudan engage Sudanese engagements on GERD in my second trip uh, in July, August, and then I just returned from a trip uh, that started on September 5th uh, and just ended last Friday on the 16th. Uh, this last trip was very much focused on trying to get the parties, uh, the Tigrayan Regional Authority and the government of Ethiopia to stop fighting and to uh, accept and participate under an AU-led process of peace talks uh, as it is our firm belief and one that has been stated by the parties that there is no military solution to the conflict. The Ethiopian people have suffered too much already and it is critically important that the parties uh, participate again in, in a robust African led process. Uh, there may be questions on how that is shaping up, but my uh, diplomatic engagement was very much uh, focused on trying to see what we could do uh, to advance uh, the African Union-led uh, efforts. And specifically, while I was in uh, Addis, I had the opportunity to engage with the senior most levels of the Ethiopian government, to listen to their issues of concern, to try to uh, work with the government in terms of how we could advance uh, peace talks, and likewise was able to engage with uh, the Tigrayan Regional Authority uh, uh, representatives uh, to try to, again, uh, urge that there be 
uh, cessation of hostilities and certainly that they go to peace talks right away. We uh, had opportunities to engage with uh, High Representative Obasanjo together with my colleague, our very able and talented ambassador to the African Union, Jesse Le Pen, on multiple occasions. We also spoke with Chairperson Faki and his team and had the opportunity to also engage my counterparts from the United Nations, the SRSG, Hannah Tete, as well as with the uh, EU uh, Special Envoy, Aneta Weber. Uh, together with my uh, colleague, the Chargé d'Affaires uh, in Addis, uh, Tracy Jacobson, we also did a very fulsome round of engagements, uh, again, focused on trying to uh, move forward on a, a peace process that can uh, yield the type of, of lasting uh, peace that all Ethiopians want. Uh, I should be clear that U.S. policy, as you probably are, are well aware, is that the United States is committed to the unity, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of Ethiopia. And our sole objectives are to seek peace and to uh, provide uh, humanitarian assistance to all Ethiopians in need, including those suffering from a very severe drought. And so we do this in the spirit of partnership and friendship in trying to address some very difficult and complex issues, uh, but remain uh, quite concerned that the fighting is ongoing. And in fact, this week uh, here at the United Nations, uh, together with uh, my colleague, uh, Assistant Secretary Mali Fee, who was also in Nairobi for President Ruto's inauguration, are working with a number of uh, other partners, international partners, uh, to again, urge that the parties go to talks. There is no other uh, viable way forward. Uh, and Rest assured that the United States is engaged diplomatically at the highest levels, at multiple levels, and with many of my colleagues at the State Department uh, to try to see uh, how working in, in concert with the African Union, and again, those that are interested in pursuing peace uh, in the Horn, how we can advance on those issues. So let me stop there, because I know there are a multitude of questions, uh, which I'll be happy to entertain for the time that we have. And uh, if we don't get to all of them on this occasion, I trust that there will be other opportunities for us to uh, exchange uh, on these issues of, of great consequence uh, in, in the hopes that, again, we're able to uh, start a, a process that will yield uh, dividends for the Ethiopian people that will bring to an end uh, horrific uh, circumstances and suffering uh, so that uh, all Ethiopians can enjoy a, a better future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Special Envoy Hammer. We will now begin the question and answer portion of today's call. For those asking questions, please click on the raise hand button and then type in your name, location and affiliation into the Q&A tab. We ask you uh, that you limit yourself to one question related to the topic of today's briefing, the Special Envoy's recent travel to the region in support of the African Union's efforts to launch talks aimed at ending the conflict in Northern Ethiopia. The briefing is very full. As a courtesy to your fellow journalists, please keep your questions succinct. Our first question was submitted in advance by Sedale Lema of the Addis Standard, uh, who asks, what diplomat diplomatic leverage is left for the United States to bring the two belligerents to talks uh, for talks on peaceful resolution of the war that it hasn't deployed in the past. Well, thank you very much, Sadali. I appreciate your question. It's not so much a matter of leverage uh, that the United States brings. Uh, I think what we have seen, given our, our historic uh, relationship and strategic partnership with Eth Ethiopia, there's a, a pretty much a, a, a very good understanding that we can be an honest broker, that we can help the parties uh, come together uh, in a support role of the African Union. You may have seen that uh, President Obasanjo on August 4th after a meeting uh, uh, made it clear that uh, the AU-led process would be accompanied by other partners, uh, international partners, including the United States. Uh, he mentioned the EU, he mentioned uh, EGAD as well as the UN. So I think that what is important here is that the parties recognize that the United States is trying to serve their best interests, the best interests of Ethiopia, which is again, to begin a, a process that allows them through dialogue to resolve uh, outstanding uh, 
uh, complex and difficult political issues, that the fighting is not going to yield uh, uh, victory for either side, and that therefore the focus needs to be on uh, stopping the, the fighting, uh, ensuring uh, humanitarian assistance delivery, looking at restoration of services, and then, of course, uh, looking to see how those uh, tough uh, political questions that only Ethiopians uh, can decide are addressed uh, through dialogue. Thank you very much. Our next question will go live to Nick Schifrin from PBS in the United States. Hi, Nick. <laughs> hey, Mike. How are you? Thanks so much for doing this. Great to see you. Thanks. Good, Thanks, good everyone. To, well, good to see you virtually, I guess. Hopefully, we'll, we'll uh, meet up someplace. Are you here in New Absolutely. York? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be up by tomorrow, so I'll send you a note. I appreciate it. Sounds good. Um, so, uh, uh, as you know, the, the Eritreans, uh, sorry, the, the Tigrayans announced today that, that Eritrea has launched uh, what the Tigrayans are calling a, a full-scale assault or mobilization. Uh, is that something that you're seeing, one? And two, what is that a sign of? What, what, are you, uh, what do you fear is coming next? And what's your message to Addis uh, if indeed the Eritreans are, are once again on the move. Thanks. Th thank you very much, Nick. Uh, yes, we've been tracking uh, Eritrean uh, troop movements uh, across the border. Uh, they are extremely concerning and we condemn it. Uh, all uh, e external foreign actors should respect uh, Ethiopia's territorial uh, integrity and avoid fueling the conflict. Uh, we couldn't be any clearer. We've said this repeatedly. Uh, we will encourage those that might uh, be able to communicate directly with Asmara that uh, this is uh, of extreme concern and, and must stop. Uh, I'm not gonna lean forward in terms of other uh, measures that we might be able to undertake, but really uh, this is a, a, a conflict uh, from which Ethiopians, Tigrayans, uh, Afars, uh, Amharans have suffered greatly. And, uh, the presence of, of Eritrean troops in Ethiopia only serves to complicate matters and to inflame an already tragic uh, situation. Thank you. Our next question will go to Julia Paravicini, um, writers in Ethiopia. Can you open the line, please? It's uh, 611-525-5215. Your line is open. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Hi, Mike. Hi, Ambassador. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for calling in. Um, so I have um, one question, which is whether you could confirm that um, talks between the parties took place in Djibouti, and if so, what was achieved? And um, as the colleague before me asked, um, clearly um, there is an offensive ongoing, so do you actually think that the negotiating parties, or at least the Ethiopian government and its allies, are still interested in peace talks? Let me answer the second part uh, first. Uh, we saw after the Tigrayan Regional Authority uh, published a, a letter or a statement on 9-11, uh, which also happened to be Ethiopia's uh, new year, that they are prepared to, to go to talks and in fact offered to abide by a mutually uh, agreeable uh, cessation of hostilities. Subsequent to that, we've seen uh, statements uh, from the Ethiopian government repeating and reiterating their prior position that they're ready to go to talks uh, uh, anywhere, uh, anytime. And we're taking both at their, at their word in the sense that uh, they are committed to trying to find a peaceful resolution. Of course, the continuing escalation of, of violence is, 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 is extremely concerning. And we urge uh, them to, to stop fighting and get to talks. Regarding your, your first question, I, I appreciate the, the interest. As you will probably understand, uh, the United States is very actively diplomatically involved uh, in trying to uh, bring uh, the parties to talks. And I am not going to be in a position to share uh, every element of our efforts. But rest assured, we are doing what we're doing. Uh, 
uh, in full uh, expectation that the parties uh, are wanting uh, to find a way forward to, to get to dialogue and our efforts, particularly over the time that I was there in Addis Ababa, and we will continue this week, is, is working with uh, the African Union that is making determinations on how best to launch this peace process. There's high uh, representative Obasanjo. I understand other uh, mediators may be brought in to bolster the effort. As I mentioned, uh, they're looking to have international uh, partners like the United States accompany that effort. And so uh, we'll have some more meetings here in New York, which I hope will be productive, including with uh, the African Union and others to see how we can put forward uh, uh, through the AU a, a, a viable, robust peace process that gives the parties confidence uh, and that will enable them to then sit across the table and, and work out some of their uh, political uh, differences. Uh, but again, having foreign actors uh, uh, become involved only serves to exacerbate uh, the crisis and lead to increasing suffering uh, by Ethiopians. Uh, so we call on them to stop. Thank you. Our next question is live from uh, AFP, Nick Perry uh, in Kenya, I believe. Could you open the line, please? Your line is open. Uh, hi there. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, Nick. Hi. I, yeah. Hi, Ambassador. Thanks very much uh, uh, for the briefing today. Um, I did want to follow up with with just generally, you've been meeting with the highest level of governments, but also officials in Tigray and international actors, the AU. What sense is there about any optimism that these talks are actually uh, coming any closer to realization? There's been a lot of rhetoric about hoping that or, or encouraging the Eritreans to withdraw and calling for a cessation of hostilities, but as my colleagues have pointed out, it's really only going in the other direction. Can you give us a sense of how likely you think negotiations will actually be likely to succeed? Do you do, is there a belief that both sides are genuinely committed to a peace process? Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate the question, it's a good one. And that, you know, it's, it's hard to, at the end of the day to determine what the true intent of the parties are, but we, can, we have to take them at, at their word when they're saying that they are committed to trying to find a, a peaceful resolution to this. And we are, we are realists as well. Uh, all that we can do as the United States is working with our international partners, with the African Union, uh, to provide a, a vehicle for them to be able to address uh, these issues. The two parties know themselves extremely well. Uh, these issues are, are hard, but shouldn't require war. And uh, I will keep trying, it's, it's my mandate to, to do so uh, from the, the Secretary of State, from the White House, uh, to do everything we can in, in our diplomatic arsenal uh, to try to make this uh, possible. And uh, I think that's what you're seeing, engagement uh, at all levels, as I mentioned with our Assistant Secretary Molly Fee uh, in the region for the inauguration of Ruto, now back here, uh, we had already a series of meetings here in New York uh, yesterday. We have a full uh, schedule. And so uh, it's, you know, no, none of us has a, a crystal ball and it's very difficult to predict. But what I can rest, you know, assure you is that uh, we are intensely working on, on this issue uh, with uh, not only the parties, but uh, in coordination with a number of our close uh, partners and allies uh, both on the continent, in the region, uh, and extending uh, to Europe. And so I think you saw a lot of statements from other governments uh, urging the same. I think there's a chorus of calls for uh, peace talks to, uh, to start, and we hope the parties will make the, the courageous decisions to, to, uh, to stop uh, the, the fighting on the battlefield and uh, to sit across the table for, for the good of all Ethiopians. And uh, I think the more that they hear that there's international support for a robust process that uh, can help uh, deliver that peace, uh, the more likely it is that uh, hopefully uh, they will abandon any thoughts of continuing to pursue 
uh, their objectives uh, through military means. Thank you. Our next question will go live to uh, Mohamed Tawakel from Al Jazeera. Can you open the line, please? Jazeera. It's the last one. Thank you, your line is open. Can you unmute Mr. Tawakel? Hello. Hello. I'm Ilham. I'm going to be talking on behalf of Mr. Tawakel from Al Jazeera office. Okay, Thank we can you. hear you. Ambassador, okay, go ahead. Uh, hello, Ambassador. Thank you for this uh, for allowing us to attend this press briefing. Our question is as follows. The first one is, uh, what is the solution? What is U.S.'s solution to the crisis that is going on in Ethiopia? And our second question is, uh, what is the coordination between the U.S. and the AU when coming to solving this, uh, this war? And uh, thirdly, why is the focus on uh, this war from the international community more than when there, when there are other crises happening in Africa? Uh, th thank you very much uh, for your question. Um, just for, for the record, uh, when uh, Al Jazeera does reporting, they should make sure to get it accurately. They gave uh, my uh, predecessor, David Satterfield, a lot of air uh, in terms of continuing these efforts. Uh, I love David, but he's retired, so now it's me. No, just uh, in any case, uh, this just puts a premium on, on making sure the reporting is is factual and accurate, especially when it's easy to, to verify. Uh, in terms of, I think your question is, is is misplaced in terms of what is the U.S. solution. The the solution has to come from Ethiopians. The, it's their country. All that we can do as the United States is to encourage them to work to resolve these very difficult differences. Uh, diplomatically through uh, dialogue. And that is what we're doing. Uh, we see the great potential uh, of Ethiopia, an Ethiopia where all Ethiopians can flourish. And that's the kind of strategic partnership we had with Ethiopia before this conflict, conflict started in, in November of 2020. And so if the parties are able to uh, make the tough decision to uh, stop hostilities, to start a dialogue, uh, then they will be in a better position to end the suffering of their people and to then try to make progress as happens in most democracies through dialogue and through uh, peaceful means. Um, secondly, as far as U.S. and AU coordination, um, it couldn't be tighter, uh, again, through the fine work of our uh, ambassador to the African Union, Jesse Le Pen. We had multiple meetings with senior leadership of the African Union. We have ongoing dialogue. In fact, as I was coming here, I was getting a call from, from somebody from the EU. I couldn't take his call because I had to attend uh, to this business of this important uh, press briefing. And, but as soon as this is over, I will uh, call him back. And I think there's a great spirit of partnership partnership that President Biden offered uh, upon uh, coming to office and partnership that we're intent in trying to provide in support uh, of the African uh, Union. And so there is a very good communication, a very good understanding of what we're trying to get done. And it's only through the work of us collectively uh, that uh, we stand a chance to have the parties then engage and uh, hopefully uh, deliver uh, peace, which is in all of their best interests. They have to realize that with peace comes prosperity. Uh, the fighting will bring only misery. Thank you. Um, I would like to read a question we, that was submitted in advance from Mohammed Maher from um, Al Masri Al Yum newspaper in Egypt. He asks, Ambassador Hammer, you have visited the United Arab Emirates. How can the UAE help stabilize the Horn of Africa? Thank you for your question, Mohammed. And uh, yes, I've uh, visited the UAE and in fact have consultations with other uh, Middle Eastern governments. Uh, it's really important um, that 
we all work together again to encourage the parties to see that peace and stability can bring economic development uh, and, and better uh, circumstances for Ethiopians and for the peoples of the Horn. And we very much appreciate uh, our discussions with our Emirati friends and, and partners. Uh, they bring their uh, own perspective and they understand the region supremely well. And it's only through us all working uh, in concert, uh, hopefully uh, bringing uh, our own perspectives uh, in helping the parties understand how to best resolve their differences at the, at the, at the peace talks that then we might have uh, success. But I've very much appreciated uh, their uh, engagements, uh, that is the Emiratis and Saudis and others who are interested in, in seeing uh, that peace take, uh, take uh, root uh, in Ethiopia. And of course, as I mentioned, part of my mandate is also uh, to try to encourage uh, the parties uh, to reach uh, a GERD agreement that serves uh, the interests of uh, all three uh, countries, uh, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt. And uh, uh, again, uh, such an agreement would also be something that would bring stability um, to the region and would be important in terms of providing opportunities uh, for greater economic investment and development, which again, serves uh, all three countries. Thanks. Um, we will take a live question from Zaid Al Harare, uh, who I believe is with Al uh, Arabi TV in Ethiopia. Uh, operator, can you open the line, please? Uh, Miss, yes, there you go. You can speak now. أنا أشكرك سعد سفير على تحت هذه الفرصة شكر موصول لجميع الأخوة والأخوات سعد سفير حسب طلعكم وتوجهكم إلى المنطقة واستمراركم في هذه المنطقة uh, I'm sorry um, Mr. Alhari um, if you would like to ask a question in Arabic unfortunately we can only accommodate written translations so please um, write the question in Arabic in the Q&A and we'll, we'll read it out loud thank you very much um, next, we will go to Peter Fabricius from South Africa. Operator, can you open the line, please? Oh, hi. Th thank you, Tiffany. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Hammer. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. I heard from uh, a, an Ethiopian expert on this topic that the Tigrayans are not very happy with um, Mr. Abasanja as a mediator, as they regard him as being too close to the Ethiopians. I wondered if you could uh, address um, that problem, that, that question. Is that true? And is, I mean, true as in, is that the feeling of the Tigrayans? And if so, is there a solution to that? And if I may also ask you, what, what do you see as the, as the, uh, the cause of this, um, this, this, this new eruption of warfare after nine months or so of, of relative calm and peace? Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, uh, Peter, really for Tigrayan views on, uh, you know, the AU-led process and the, the personalities involved. I, I really have to defer to them to, to express themselves. I know they have expressed themselves publicly uh, previously. I would point to their September 11th uh, uh, statement that makes clear that they're prepared to go to talks under the AU, and uh, we welcome that. Uh, Again, uh, I think I know both parties want to ensure a robust, credible uh, peace process. And that's what the United States is working to support uh, as the AU puts together how these talks uh, might, might go forward. Uh, with, with regards to why the, the, the more recent outbreak uh, of hostilities, again, uh, I think that uh, the parties uh, remain in a, in a stalemate, uh, one that can only be uh, resolved through talks, and uh, unfortunately, uh, hostilities uh, resumed. Now, when I visited uh, Mekele, along with some other uh, colleagues on August 2nd, the 
uh, Tigrayan uh, authorities were very clear that they uh, were uh, preparing for potential hostilities if there wasn't uh, a restoration of services uh, as they were making the case that uh, Tigrayans were suffering badly. I mean, it's not only Tigrayans, in fact, uh, in Afar and Amhara, people are without services as well. And, and so this is, again, going to the core issues uh, that need to be addressed. And what I appreciated from the Ethiopian government is they recognized their responsibility for trying to provide uh, services for all Ethiopians, but you need a conducive environment and able to, to do so. You need a conducive security environment. And the best way uh, to get to that is, uh, of course, uh, agreeing for a cessation of hostilities to work out the modalities of how services should be restored. And that should be done in short order. And that's what we have been urging. Uh, again, uh, I can't say this enough. There is no military solution to, to this conflict. And the sooner both uh, parties recognize that, the sooner that uh, we will be uh, on, a, on a better track uh, towards peace. Our next question goes live to Ashinafi and Dale from The Reporter at Ethiopia. Bob, better open her line, please. Hello, can you hear me? Not, not very well. Could you please uh, speak up? Okay, hello, Ambassador. Can you hear me now? A little bit better, yes. Okay, thank you very much. So I have just one question. Uh, is the uh, U.S. considering to uh, resume the sanction bills prepared before in case of the continuation of the conflict and in case of the two parties will not come to the negotiation table? Um, I, I think I heard your question more or less. Uh, rest assured, again, the United States is looking at a range of of, of options to uh, encourage uh, the parties uh, to to enter into peace talks. And I, I want to just focus on the positive that can come from it. And uh, while, of course, uh, there's always a sanctions option available, and we will not hesitate to sanction those that are uh, deserving of being sanctioned, uh, right now, our, our very much of our focus is, again, on these intense diplomatic efforts uh, that the AU is undertaking, that my colleagues, international colleagues are undertaking, that we as the United States are undertaking uh, to, in a matter of hopefully a short order, uh, begin those talks and uh, get to the cessation of hostilities and ensure, again, a, a conducive environment for for trying to resolve these these matters peacefully. Next question is to Fred Harder, live uh, from the Times of London in Addis. Operator, can you open the line, please? Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes, Fred. Great. Thanks very much for the briefing, um, Ambassador. Um, my question follows on from some of the others. Uh, you said that both parties are, have expressed a preference for a robust um, peace process and that a conducive atmosphere needs to be made to restore services. I was just wondering if you could tell us in your discussions with both parties what appears to be the major obstacles right now towards getting to a cessation of hostilities and stopping the fighting. Yeah, thanks, Fred. Uh, it's a matter of trust, trust, and trust. There's no confidence on either side that the other can be trusted. And that is why, whether it's you know through the AU-led efforts, through efforts of the United States, through efforts of others, that we can hope to bring them together. They're basically, uh, the two sides were once family. And disputes between families can be very rough. But you have to think of all the people who are suffering, who are victims of this conflict, and give a chance to build confidence in each other and sufficient trust that will lead to gradual steps on both sides to uh, ensure, again, 
uh, an end to the fighting and to get to a, a situation like what we had, at least during the, the humanitarian truce, uh, which was significant in the, in the government uh, offering it and the TPLF respecting it, um, that we had several months uh, after the very hard work of my predecessors uh, and our team, uh, embassy team and AU team in, in Addis Ababa to ensure the uh, delivery of, of humanitarian assistance. And while it took uh, several months, uh, it had gotten to a, 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 a decent level and fuel had finally begun to flow uh, into Tigray that was going to enable further distribution to all of those in need uh, when then hostilities uh, resumed. And uh, we had that very unfortunate incident of the seizure of 12 uh, fuel WFP fuel trucks by the TPLF. And that also needs to be addressed. But rest assured, uh, we as the United States and others will continue our efforts to try to help the parties uh, build some confidence, uh, build some trust uh, so that then uh, they can be confident that with the support of the international community, that commitments made will be commitments abided by and that that will uh, start uh, again, uh, start us down a road uh, towards peace. We have time for two questions. Uh, we'll take one live from Samuel Tameni of EBS Television. Operator, can you open the line, please? He's based in Ethiopia. Samuel Tamene, if you can unmute yourself, you're open to talk. Okay, I think while we sort him out, um, I'll read a question that was sent in uh, in advance from Mr. Uh, Vincent Lennard of RFI Africa Service in France. He's asking about the UN. Um, uh, he asks regarding the UN General Assembly, is there a US initiative regarding Africa? Macron is lobbying South Africa to provide political and diplomatic support for the Western position on Ukraine. Is the U.S. doing the same? Well, again, thank you very much uh, for your question. Very topical, as here we are in New York uh, for yet uh, another UNGA. Uh, and uh, I was speaking with uh, Secretary Blinken yesterday, and clearly, and President Biden uh, has an opportunity to address uh, the world uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. And so I don't want to uh, get ahead of my president, but it's it's very clear that we have uh, made it a priority to work on global health uh, in our support for uh, experiences uh, in DRC, but I'm seeing it uh, in, in Ethiopia and across the continent for helping develop uh, medical solutions and, uh, and, and know-how for addressing some uh, tremendous uh, diseases it began with our efforts with PEPFAR, which I'm sure you're all aware of many uh, uh, decades, a couple of decades ago, but now it's expanded to address the, the COVID crisis. And now we're looking at possibilities uh, to combat malaria. And so it's, it's un, un, underreported what the United States has done through the generosity of the American people in terms of advancing uh, on key issues of global health, which ultimately save African lives, which save lives uh, around the world. Secondly, uh, you have seen the efforts of what we've done in terms of food security, and we will continue to do that. It is uh, an ongoing crisis exacerbated by the Russian invasion of Ukraine and uh, limiting uh, exports uh, of grain and other critical supplies. We are encouraged that some uh, grain is now starting to flow, uh, but we fully realize the struggles of many African uh, countries uh, who are dependent on this grain uh, for their food security and that people are in dire and desperate need. The best way to address that is to for the Russians to stop uh, and withdraw and end their, their invasion of Ukraine. Uh, we will continue to work on this. I uh, was uh, very honored to, to hear uh, about uh, additional $488 million that the United States would be providing uh, Ethiopia uh, specifically to, uh, uh, to uh, in, in increase humanitarian assistance and address 
uh, drought relief. Uh, you know that the issues of climate change are primary uh, for uh, President Biden, for this administration through Secretary Kerry's efforts as our special envoy. There's COP27 coming up soon uh, in Egypt. We had a meeting with uh, Foreign Minister Shukri just yesterday uh, in which this was a major topic of conversation. So rest assured, we have a very broad agenda. What the United States does in the continent matters. It matters because it saves lives. It helps people's development. We have tremendous uh, educational and exchange programs. And that sometimes that those stories don't get told as frequently because we focus uh, on crises and wars. Uh, but I'm very proud of what the United States does. I'm very proud of what the work that uh, our USAID through uh, administrator power and the teams that we have on the field uh, to deliver uh, much needed uh, humanitarian assistance to people most in need, to the most vulnerable. I'm proud of the work we do to help refugees and as a, one of the major supporters to ICRC and to other organizations that uh, provide for the most needy. And so I think this week will allow us to build on those efforts to try to work with other partners uh, in sharing the, the generosity of the American people and to uh, and for for maximum effect. And uh, again, uh, this is just an opportunity to highlight that that the U.S. relationship goes far beyond what the headlines of of trying to, and of course this interest, you know, is this uh, press availability relates directly to it because you're concerned about matters of war and peace. And at the same time, uh, we continue to provide assistance to Ethiopians in need all across the country. And I've had opportunities to talk uh, to different diaspora groups in the United States representing multiple ethnicities, where it's the Oromo, the Amhara, the Afar, the Tigrayans, of course, the uh, those from Somali region and, and other regions. And there is a lot of, of need and we do our best to help those uh, that most uh, require assistance. But the goal here is to achieve peace and to then enable countries to pursue their economic development plans, to promote investment, uh, again, to create uh, prosperity, which is really the, the ultimate desire of, of all peoples and certainly of, of the people uh, on the continent. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, uh, Special Envoy Hammer. Um, and that is all the time we have today. You've given us a generous amount of your time. I know you have many meetings and interviews following us. Did you have any brief words as we close? No, again, a, a shout out to all of you journalists on, on this a phone call in my experience, uh, whether it was in DRC or serving in other countries and now in the Horn, the work that you do is courageous, it's important, it's difficult. Uh, I appreciate all your questions, the tough ones. I, pre I prefer perhaps the easy ones, but uh, hold us accountable as a government. Hold the governments where you're reporting from uh, accountable, expose corruption, expose human rights abuses, uh, and, and hold uh, those in power to, to account. Uh, your, your jobs are, are, are really important for democracy and for the people that you're trying to inform. And I have utmost respect uh, for your efforts. Uh, and uh, again, look forward to uh, having an opportunity to meet uh, some or most of you in person at some point uh, throughout my career. I've really appreciated uh, the media and the press and its importance in uh, for a democracy, liberty of, 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 of expression and press freedom are, are paramount. So uh, even in your toughest days, know that what you're doing matters. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that concludes today's briefing. I would like to thank the US Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, Mike Hammer, for speaking to us today and thank all of our journalists for participating. If you have any questions about today's briefing, you may contact the Africa Regional Media Hub at afmediahub at state.gov. Thank you. And thank you, Tiffany and the Hub. Uh, I remember back in the day when I was Assistant Secretary of Public Affairs and this was just getting going and it's thriving. So again, thanks for the opportunity to engage with so many uh, journalists and I hope uh, we'll be doing this again sometime soon. It's mutual. Thank you, goodbye.